Thanks for joining us here today. If this is your first time or you're returning to us, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. While you're there, give us an update on how God is working in your life. Now, if He's working life change through our ministries, let me encourage you to give to us financially on the website by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so very much for tuning in today, and welcome to Church. Now. What we did Sunday was kind of painted in a broad stroke that, you know, we're, we're, we're built in the image and likeness of God. And we have this ability to create because we're made like God. And, and that we as a church, we need to be creating. We need to be doing things. John was just telling me that our, our uh, website, new website is now up and our podcasts are up like we want them to be now you know, already you can go on there right now because I went on it today and looked at it and there's Sunday sermon that's already on there. And it's amazing because people in Germany tonight can hit Church on the Rock's podcast and they can listen to Sunday sermon. You know, that's awesome. That's creative power. That's tapping into all the resources that we have available to us and using them. Um, <clears throat> tonight, though, I want to narrow that focus down to a specific creative talent, I guess you would call it. Maybe not a talent, a creative something that God has put in us. I, I know that the Bible warns against adding to or taking away from Scripture. I know that. I'll just save you the trouble of emailing me or telling me after service that you're not supposed to do that. I already know that. But if you'll bear with me for just a moment, um, I want to I want to add a verse to this chapter tonight. I like to call it Genesis 1-0. Because Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But I would like to think that Genesis 1-0 would simply say, Before the beginning, there was God. Before the beginning, there was God. Before there was a heaven and an earth, there was God. Before there was a garden, there was God. Before there was an Adam and an Eve, there was God. Before there was a Satan, there was God. Before a sun, moon, and stars, in one place I like it, the Scripture says, before the world was, I am. Before the world was, I am. He who was and is and is to come. Creation as we know it began with just a thought. God had a thought. God had, God had a thought. God wanted, he created mankind because he wanted, he wanted someone to express his love through. He didn't do it because he was lonely, but he wanted to express his love. And, and so verse 2 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. So, so we see that, that God had a thought, and then the Spirit of God began to move, and then God started talking. Verse 3 says, And God said, first thing we ever have recorded, that God said, Let there be light. And there was light. As I said Sunday, sometimes we read this and we read it so quickly or we hear it so often we, 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 we forget about it. We don't really understand it. God had a thought and he said, let there be light. And there was light. Back years ago, some of you probably, if you're over 40, you remember this. They had a commercial that said, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Remember that? Let me tell you something. When God talks... The light listens. When God talks, dead men get up out of the grave. When God talks, sick people get healed. Addicted people get set free. When God talks, the molecules and atoms and elements listen and obey him. And so I think one of the most awesome attributes of God, if you could pick one, is his magnificent ability to create something out of nothing. It's one thing to create something out of something. I'll pick on him one more time. Kevin can take a stack of lumber and create something out of something. Some of you ladies can take ingredients, eggs and flour and sugar and stuff, and you can create something out of something. 
but to create something out of nothing. That's an awesome attribute of God. You take people who are into evolution and the Big Bang Theory and all this, and they'll want to tell you that there were two molecules that were flying around, and one day they collided, and boom, out popped the universe. But never have they been able to tell you where the molecules come from. At some point, you have to get back to God created. God created. God created. To take absolutely nothing, void, emptiness, nothingness, and create something as wonderful and complex as the universe, something that that still boggles the mind of people that we're still trying to figure out. And God created it with nothing but a spoken word. The psalmist said in in Psalm 19.1, he said, the heavens declare the glory of God. When you look up, you see the glory of God. When you look at the stars and the moon and the sun, and then he said the earth shows forth his handiwork. When you go and you look at the mountains, and, and you look, and I was in Nevada at Lake Tahoe not long ago, and you see the lake and you see the valleys and you see the mountains and you see the trees and you see all these things that God created. He says the earth shows forth his handiwork. My embryonic brain strains to even begin to conceive that, how God carved out the valleys and heaped up the mountains and then sort of as, as sort of a grand finale to all of his creation, God reaches down and grabs hold of the handful of the dirt that he just created and he creates mankind out of the dust of the earth. Man that's so complex, man that that even when we sleep, our heart continues to beat and our lungs continue to breathe and and things that can, can, you know, my brain can tell myself to snap my finger and that fast it does it. I mean, our, our bodies are so complex. But something stood out about this creation that separated it from all other creations. We talked about it Sunday, but listen in verse 26. Then God said... Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They'll reign over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and the livestock and the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry on the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. He created them. This one, God says, I'm making like me. This one I'm making in my own image, in my own likeness. and I'm, I'm giving it dominion over the whole earth. And it said God breathed into man his own spirit. This one's different than all the others. I believe there was a time when mankind was so much like God that it's scary. I believe a lot of that was lost in the fall. Not in the fall, the time of the year. In the fall of mankind. When mankind rebelled and sinned against God, I think a lot of a lot of this was 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 lost. Much was lost in the fall, but one thing that I think was not lost is the thing that I'm talking to you about tonight, and that is the creative power of mankind. I believe that man, because we're created in the image and likeness of God, we still possess that power. So if God can can create something out of nothing using nothing but his spoken word. Never said he, you know, he had to build something. He just said things. He just spoke a word. He said, let there be. And suddenly there is something where there was nothing a while ago. And what I want you to see is because we're created in the image of God, Because God made man in his own likeness, because he breathed into man his own spirit, because he gave man dominion over the whole earth, now mankind carries in his body. You carry in your body. I carry in my body the same awesome ability to create something out of nothing using only a spoken word. And I don't think we understand that. I don't think we get the magnitude of this. But because I'm made in the image of God, because I'm made like him, I can speak a word. And just because I speak a word, suddenly there is something where there was nothing a while ago. Just because I spoke a word. And maybe you're saying, I don't understand what you mean. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a person who is lost, without Christ, without hope. Many times you find these people, they have no joy. They have no peace. 
Many times they have no reason to live. They're just existing. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. So they're not even living. They're just existing outside of Christ because Christ is life. Their life is much like the earth was in verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's how we find these people many times. There's a void. There's an emptiness in their life. There's something missing in their life. But then, suddenly, the last half of that verse says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So what happens is the Spirit of God moves upon one of these human beings that's created in the image and likeness of God, that's full of the Spirit of God, that God has breathed into him. This man has has died to self, but he's been born again. The Spirit of God lives in him, and the Spirit of God begins to move in him, And then the next verse says, and God said, let there be, and there was. So suddenly one of God's people begins to speak to this person. They don't have to do anything. They just speak. They say things like, hey, listen to me. I want you to know something. God loves you with an incredible love that if you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you know how incredibly loved you are by God? You're not doing anything. All you're doing is speaking words. And and then suddenly, if if you're not careful, there'll be light where there was no light. All of a sudden, there'll be hope where there was no hope. There'll be joy where there was no joy. There'll be peace where there was. They'll look at you and like, what, really? You think you really think God loves me? And suddenly, there's, there's something there that wasn't there a few minutes ago. The Bible said God will use the foolishness of preaching to bring men to Jesus. Just words. I've walked into prisons. I've walked into death row where there's cold-blooded killers and rapists and murderers and hard, calloused, cold men and stood up and did nothing but stand there and say words for 30 minutes. And then suddenly you've got these hard, hard criminals standing around an altar somewhere with hot tears rolling off their face, snotting and crying and carrying on. And there's something there that wasn't there 30 minutes ago with nothing but a spoken word. Nothing but words. And suddenly there's something there. There's something that's created in them that that wasn't there. Lord really began to show me this in the middle of a counseling session one time. Sometimes people say, well, my wife doesn't have any affection for me anymore. My husband doesn't have any feelings for me anymore. Do you know that because you're created in the image and likeness of God, because you're made like him, that you can speak the right words and, and, and you can create life where there is no life? You can create affection where there is no affection? You can create feelings where there was no feelings a while ago? You can do that not because you're a smooth talker, but because you're made in the image and likeness of God. Now, it may not happen immediately, but if you'll consistently begin to speak words of life into your marriage and into your spouse, you can literally raise your marriage from the dead. Let me give you a simple example, another example. Let me show you the flip side of this. I hope, as far as I know, and I hope there's nobody here tonight that you got hard feelings against me. There has been. There probably will be again. But as far as I know, nobody's mad at me tonight. If you are, please don't tell me. If you're going to talk about me, do it behind my back. That way I won't ever have to worry about it and I won't know about it. But as far as I know, those feelings do not exist, at least for the moment. I hope. But did you know that I have such power in me because I'm created in the image and likeness of my Father? Because I'm made... In his image, because he's breathed into me the breath of life, do you know that that I could create feelings in you that you didn't even know you were capable of having? I could begin to speak lies and accusations, and I could begin to say things to you that, Harvey, you are no good son of a so-and-so, and you know what? And I know what you did, and I saw you, and you were doing this, and you were doing that, and suddenly in five minutes, there'd be feelings in you that weren't there five minutes ago. Absolutely. You'd jump up and say, what are you talking about? You're you're not, you know, I could have this place in an uproar using nothing but the spoken word. I haven't had to do anything. All I've done is speak words. All I've done is speak words. 
words of death, words of lies and accusations, and create feelings of anger and hate and bitterness and rage, emotions that were non-existent five minutes ago are very real now. That's awesome creative power. It's, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a surgeon takes a knife and a surgeon can skillfully cut away cancer and go in and operate on knees and hearts and things and do cr- all these amazing things. Take that same knife and put it in the hands of a thug and they can rape and murder and kill. Same instrument. Same instrument, different hands. Same, just words, just words, just words. As a being that's created in the image and likeness of God who possesses such awesome power to create, I just want you to understand there comes with that awesome responsibility. Because if you miss everything else, don't miss this. Not only, it's not just that we can create with our words, we do create with our words. Whether you want to or not, you can't help it that you were made in the image and likeness of God. You can't stop that. You can't change the fact that he made you like him. So we create every day with our words. We create feelings that weren't there a while ago. You ever said something and you thought nothing about it and somebody comes up to you and says, you know, it really hurt my feelings. You think, what? Yeah, it really hurt my feelings. You think, I didn't mean anything by it. You didn't know, but you created feelings that weren't there a while ago. Or somebody comes up to you and says, you know what? I appreciate you saying that. That just really made me feel good. I just really needed to hear that today. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. That really encouraged me. See, we create every day and don't even realize it. Now, that can be exciting and terrifying all at the same time. You remember the little Aladdin's lamp, you know, and you rub it and the genie pops out and you get three wishes and story of the little boy, he got it, you know, and he had his little three wishes, and he kind of forgot about it, and he, he haphazardly said, well, I wish I had some ice cream, you know, poof, he had ice cream, but, and, and he, the moral of the story, he ended up wasting all of his wishes because he couldn't control his tongue. I mean, when you got three wishes, you don't want to wish for ice cream, right? You want to go a little higher than that. When you think about we as human beings who are created in the image and likeness of God who simply spoke and the world was, it's a little scary to think how carelessly we throw our words around. We waste our words because we don't realize our own creative power. The Bible says the tongue is a little member, but how great a matter a little fire kindleth. One little match can start a fire that will burn hundreds of thousands of acres. That little tongue can start a fire that can destroy that can that can destroy families that can destroy communities. How quickly we'll scream at our spouse or somebody, "Just leave me alone!" Is that what you want them to leave you alone? God said it's not good for man to be alone. How many parents have screamed at their kids, just get out of here and don't come back? How powerful. How many times have you said, I just wish I were dead or I'm going to kill you? And you say, well, that's just trivia. That's just, maybe it is, but I do know the Bible says we possess in our words the power of life and death. And I know that I possess in my words the power both to heal and to hurt. And I choose every day how I'm going to use them. And I think we need to be cognizant of that. I think we need to think about that. Before we speak, think. Are these words going to hurt or are they going to heal? I've had people walk up to me on the street and say things like, you know, you came and preached when I was in prison and Man, what you said just changed my life, you know, and, and I understand. I know that, no, I didn't change them. The Holy Spirit changed them, but it was words that were set on fire by the Holy Spirit. They were just anointed by the Holy Spirit. Creative power. The Bible said God calls those things that are not as though they were. In other words, God sees something that's not what he wants it to be, and he begins to call it what he wants it to be. 
He begins to treat it like it is what he wants it to be, and as a result, it becomes what he wants it to be. He spoke to a fig tree, and he cursed the thing. And looked like nothing happened till the next day, and they come out, and all the leaves had withered and died because he had this awesome ability to speak and create something. Let there be light, and there was light. He's speaking it by faith, or sometimes I like to say he, he, he speaks it on credit. You say, I wish my wife was more affectionate. I wish my husband was more attentive. Listen, you may have to give him a little credit. You may have to speak it on credit. You may have to call those things that are not as though they were. You may have to start telling that husband, thank you for listening to me. That means so much to me that you're listening to me, even if they're not. <laughs> even if they're not. Because you start saying that, and they're like... Okay, they'll start listening to you. It's just like those hamburgers. Remember the hamburgers? Same thing. That makes me feel so good when you just listen to me. I'll be there. I'll start listening to you then. You start creating things in them that wasn't there while you swear so thank you for showing me how much you care for me. I love you for that. You think, have I been doing that? No, but she's thanking you for it anyway. She's giving you credit. She's giving you credit. He's giving you credit. God said, let there be light. There was light. And God saw the light and said, it's good. You start speaking those words of life into your marriage, into your friends, over your enemies, into your church, and all of a sudden you'll look at it, you'll look at your marriage and say, oh, that's good. And you'll look at your church and say, oh, man, that's good. This thing's working. I'm not talking about what's, what's wrong and how I don't like this and I don't like that. And I don't think we ought to have red and green dots going around. Say, Thank God for the red and green. Look at the red and green dots. How awesome is that? Start speaking words of life, and suddenly you'll say, oh, that's good. That's good. Stop talking negative and speaking everything. Stop screaming at the darkness and just turn on the light. Let there be light. Let there be love. Let there be friendship. Let there be companionship. What can I do to help you? Because you're created in the image and likeness of God. You'll look at them in a little while and say, it's good. I can't believe it. It's good. You create things that were not there before. Revelation 12, 11 says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. By the blood, of, you can overcome anything by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. That's two powerful forces coming together. The blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. Whatever your situation is, you can overcome it by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Let me give you two real quick scriptures out of Proverbs. You can turn there if you want to, but I'll just read them to you. Proverbs chapter 15. Listen, listen to these. Verse 23. It says, everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It's a wonderful thing to say the right thing at the right time. Everybody enjoys that. It's an awesome thing when you just say the right thing at the right time. Family's grieving. You go to the funeral home. How many have been there? You say, I don't know what to say. I don't know. And sometimes you don't have to say anything. But sometimes if you'll just ask God, God, just give me something. Give me something. And you just, you say something and you just see their countenance change. It's a wonderful thing to say the right thing at the right time. And then in verse 26, he said, uh, the Lord detests evil plans, but he delights in pure words. The Lord delights in pure words. Let me ask you something. What kind of world have you created around you? Everybody's concerned about the environment today, but what kind of environment are you creating in your home? You're made in the image and likeness of God. You create environments around you. What kind of world have you created for your children to grow up in? Can you look at your creations and say, it's good? God, everything he created, he'd look at it and say, it's good. He looked at the trees and said, that's good. He looked at the animals. He said, that's good. Look at that giraffe. Is that awesome or what? That's good. And then, then he looked at mankind and what did he say? He said, that's very good. That one's like me. That's very good. They can do what I do. I'm giving them my spirit. Just like I created them, they can create worlds. Can you look at your children and say, it's good. It's good. 
It's good. Can you look at your life and say, it's good? My life is good. Because see, because whatever it is, you help to create it. If you're always looking at your spouse and telling them how no good they are, or you're looking at your children and telling them how irresponsible, how rebellious, you're just, you're just continuing to reinforce more of that kind of, you say, yeah, but they are. No, they're not. What they are is created in the image and likeness of God. Now, if their behavior is not lining up with that, deal with the behavior. But don't tell them that's who they are. That's not who they are. They're created by God. Help them to line up their behavior. Help them to know this is not acceptable. You're a child of God and you're a child of mine. And we're created in the image and likeness of God. So our behavior is going to start lining up with who we are. Now, I don't know. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're thinking, you know what? I've created a hell on earth and didn't realize it. Oh, I blamed it on this one. I blamed it on my wife, blamed it on my husband, my kids, my job, my boss, my enemies, my friends. But you know what? I've helped to create this thing. I've spoken words of death over my marriage. I've spoken words of destruction over my children. I've talked about my church. I've talked about my friends, my enemies, my exes, my bosses. I didn't realize because I'm created in the image and likeness of God that I had the ability to create worlds. God, I want to change my world. I want to change my world. How do I change my world? I change my words. I change my words. I want to begin speaking words of life everywhere I go. I want to create a new husband. I want to create in my wife a new love. I want to look back someday. I want to look back at my life and say, it's good. It's good. And I think, that's what, I think that's what Jesus meant when he said there, there's a group that's going to stand before God and he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You realized who you were. You realized I made you like me and you didn't have to settle for par or anything. You're a cut above. You're a cut above. Again, we are incredibly glad that you joined us here today at Church of God encourage you to go to the website. There you can find any of our archive podcasts. You can send us an email about how God's working in your life or a prayer request. Or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Have a blessed day.